got to go to the Genshin concert at Carnegie Hall and even got a quick backstage tour. So if you didn't get to go to the concert yourself and want to know what it was like, or if you just want to hear my thoughts on the concert, then let me tell you about it. First things first, New York was so cold. I felt like I was dying from sheer cold and I wasn't even on Dragon Spine. But I still wanted to get to enjoy the energy of fellow fans. So after I scurried through the New York Metro in my fancy dress, I chatted with a couple of folks around and inside the venue before I went to meet up with the AWR music staff. The staff member I met up with was super nice and led me through the backstage area and onto the stage before they let audience members head to their seats. There, I got to look out onto the beautiful Stern Auditorium from the Musician's POV, which is truly breathtaking. I got to meet the show's pianist, a very friendly guy with whom I had a quick chat about our experiences performing on the Perelman stage. His dynamic performance on the keys not only covered the show's piano parts, but other instruments that provided various nations regional flavors, such as the accordion during the Fontaine section. From there, I headed to a break room of sorts where musicians would shuffle in and out to grab snacks, chat with each other, and rest. Uh, one musician I ran into was the show's guitarist, who noted that he covers the show's mandolin parts, playing his guitar in higher octaves on his instrument to mimic the sound. I also ran into the conductor of the show, Eric Roth himself. I asked Eric if he had any favorite shows or venues from the tour, and he mentioned that the performance at Chicago Symphony Center was especially significant, as he grew up in the city itself. The New York shows in Carnegie Hall, too, were incredibly noteworthy as Genshin Impact is only the second video game franchise to have a performance at that venue. But of course, it was hard to pick just one as each performance has its own unique charm with each city as a different audience and a different energy from both the musicians and the crowd. So you're really getting something new each time, even if they share the same repertoire. Concert staff actually noted that one of their favorite parts of the show was seeing how differently audiences cheered for various sections and character appearances. The program consisted of three sections, each highlighting a different portion of the traveler's journey through to VAT. A large screen accompanied the music, visually immersing you with cutscenes from the game, footage from character trailers, and live close-up footage of the musicians in the show. The concert began with the overture of storms, bringing me back to when I first experienced the confrontation between the twins and the unknown god. Once the intense opening number concluded, I was able to sit back and enjoy the main contents of the first section, which were selections that highlighted both major story beats, areas, and characters from Mondstadt. We encountered Vendi speaking with Dvalin in the Whispering Woods and enjoyed a cheerful, energetic day with a bard in Mondstadt City. Then, the music mellowed out as we traveled into the countryside to enjoy a relaxing stroll through Dawn Winery and get to know its stoic and hard-working owner through the area's calm and contemplative melodies. Traveling even further from the city, we encountered the reserved and mysterious albedo amongst the snow-covered slopes of Dragonspine. We wander through the mountain, enjoying the music that feels as ephemeral as the snow that falls around you, suspending you in an almost otherworldly land frozen in time. Finally, the section ends with a confrontation with Devalin to save Mondstadt. Here we got to enjoy Eric's dancing on the conductor's podium as he jammed along with the driving lower strings and Celestinium finale termini. I probably messed up that, the pronunciation. Say less. Let me, let me Google translate this, actually. Caelestinum finale termini. Caelestinum finale termini. <laughs> there you go. And I had to relive the many stressful attempts to take down Storm Terror. But of course, the team rescued the dragon successfully, and we end our time in the city of wind and song as the traveler moves on to their next destination. After the intermission, they brought out the first soloist, a superbly talented koto player, and began the section highlighting the people and places of Liyue. The country's main theme played, and you can really feel the prosperity of the harbor and its people as they start to rely on one another's strength rather than that of the Adepti. And of course, I found myself tearing up halfway through the piece when the visuals from the very first lantern rite graced the stage with the tunes of a bustling Liyue harbor going about its days and nights. But those tears did not last long as the roaring cheers erupted from the crowd as Child absolutely stole the show alongside the foreboding and chilling themes of the Fatui. Once the driving intensity died down and segued into one of my favorite pieces, the bright and peaceful Moon in One's Cup, as well as a few other calm selections, I found myself on the verge of tears once again as I felt myself roaming through the peaceful landscapes of the Liyue countryside. 
Of course, roaming through the wilderness of Tevat, you'll definitely run into trouble at some point, and when Rapid as Wildfires played, things really started to pick up. The whole orchestra was on fire, and the energy continued on as they transitioned into Rex Incognito to feature none other than Zhang Li himself. The violin solo towards the end of the piece was awesome, and the entire fast-paced battle section left me in a daze as we went into a graceful yet powerful section featuring the Adeptus Gani. Things then took a somber turn with a gorgeous cello solo in Golden Dreams as we moved into the fight with Tartaglia at Golden House. When its battle music began, the percussion really kept things moving and Eric was almost dancing again as he conducted the orchestra with vigor. The fun didn't stop there because we dove right into the fight with Osile and the strings really kept me on the edge of my seat. Once the battles were said and done, we said our nostalgic goodbye to the City of Contracts with the gorgeous piece, Lover's Oath. For the last section of the show, they brought out their second soloist, an amazing shakuhachi player, and similar to the previous section, began with the country of Inazuma's titular track. The selections featured the beauty and grace of Ayaka as well as the warm and friendly demeanor of Toma. It was really cool seeing the techniques the orchestra used to create Inazuma's signature sound as I saw the violins turn their instruments to the side and play them like a guitar, or heard how the roaring timpani evoked the feeling of Raiden's thunder. Since previous sections only featured one country, I expected the last section to end once they escorted the two soloists off after a few selections, but I was pleasantly surprised to hear the distinct musical modes indicative to the land of Sumeru start to rise from the orchestra. And sure enough, we got to enjoy a few selections from the Nation of Wisdom. And when I heard the lovely accordion melodies, I knew we were in for a treat with a few Fontanian pieces as well. By the end of the concert, I could really feel the determination and strength that the Traveler and their companions carried with them throughout their journey. If you've never gotten the chance to listen to live music before, that ability to feel your music on a deeper level is the charm of a live performance. If you just want to listen to music, you can listen to a CD or just play the game, but if you want to feel the music shake your bones, hear the musicians breathe, see the quirks and eccentricities of their human expression, experience emotion alongside other fans, then you need to get yourself into a concert like this one. I had a fantastic time at Melodies of an Endless Journey, and I hope we'll get to see more amazing musical content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, travelers, and may the wind guide you. Hey everybody, Rita here. Thank you so much for watching my, I guess, very first review vlog style video. Let me know what you think. Should I do more like this? Um, and if you like the video you just saw, or if you're a fan of video games, anime, music, etc., be sure to stick around for more videos and streams on my channel. I'll see you all next time. Bye!